Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Legends lore video. Now, today's content will be a little bit shorter than normal. I know I say that a lot, but it's especially true today. However, if you want more content, Charlie and I went ahead and put together a video on Cyberpunk 2077, including details about its recent delay over on X2, and it would really mean a lot to me if you would check that out because we are trying to branch out from just Star Wars games a little bit more. Anyway, today I want to talk about the New Republic and specifically the New Republic from from Star Wars Legends. Like the canon New Republic, the galactic government of old had lots of sort of bonehead moments. I think one that people very frequently refer to correctly is their poor handling of the Yuuzhan Vong invasion. Basically, they didn't handle the Vong as they were piercing the galactic border. The Yuuzhan Vong got entrenched and that apathy led to a very long war with the death of trillions of sentience resulting. However, mishandling the war was really a bunch of poor moves. Today I want to talk about one missed opportunity specifically by the New Republic that could have changed the face of the galaxy. So in 10 ABY, the reborn Emperor Palpatine launched a devastating attack against the galaxy. His attack was powered by many new machines of war, including his Eclipse class Super Star Destroyer, new tanks with basically impenetrable armor, new droid controlled starfighters, and of course the world devastating. Now, I've done a video all about the World Devastators previously, and I would argue that they're actually one of, if not the most powerful weapons in the Star Wars universe. Not only powerful though, but very, very deadly. The main principle behind a World Devastator is that it repurposes matter into weapons of war, or presumably anything else. The machines are powered by gigantic furnaces, they're usually controlled entirely by droids, and because of their armor and shielding, they are all almost indestructible. You point a world devastator at something you don't want to exist anymore, you input the design for whatever you'd like it to spit out, and you basically have an unstoppable mobile furnace. Some of this technology already did exist, albeit in much smaller forms. We have, for example, the construction droids of Coruscant, but the thing about the world devastator was that it took basically every element of technology within it to the next level. When it comes to warfare, world devastators were entire fleets upon Upon themselves. They didn't need to be protected, they could go into battlefield, they were armed with weapons and shielding, and the New Republic was actually unable to destroy a single world devastator without having Luke on the inside, feeding out the signal codes for the machines, which basically allowed them to be shut off remotely. But that's really only part of it. World devastators were frightening and very dangerous because they could also improve themselves with the debris or scrap or raw material that they collected. According to the Essential Guide to Warfare and I quote, the onboard factories were modular, capable of being reconfigured in moments to produce anything the Empire might want, from probe droids to AT-ATs. Well, that also includes additional armor, weapons, hull sections for the World Devastator itself, and perhaps even other World Devastators. So you get this sort of situation where one World Devastator becomes more and more powerful, perhaps even producing basically offspring. World Devastators could also be operated remotely, which even Palpatine realized was dangerous. You have unkillable stampeding robots getting more and more powerful. If one of them decides it's not too epic to serve the Empire, then it could go off and do its own thing, or it could be stolen by somebody else, which is why the shutdown codes we referred to earlier, or the command codes generally existed. So to summarize, world devastators like a whole lot of Dark Empire technology were basically god machines. But what if I told you the Empire did not lose all world devastators as the command codes were hacked on Mon Calamari? In reality, According to the Essential Guide to Warfare, and I quote, a small number of world devastators were pressed into service by the Alliance, used for fleet support and reconstruction projects in the months that followed. Amid outcry about their continued use, they were scrapped by the New Republic around 12 ABY. So basically, the New Republic had access to the greatest shipyards, disaster relief centers, planet colonizers, debris destroyers, garbage disposals, or whatever else of all time, and they got rid of them because it looked looked bad from a PR perspective. These world devastators could have been put into an asteroid field, and this is something Palpatine may have done to help produce his massive fleets at BIS, and alone completely revitalized the New Republic Navy. And keep in mind, 12 ABY was not the end of hostilities between the New Republic and the Empire, it was actually the opposite. The New Republic was fairly weakened at this point because of the Thrawn campaign and Operation Shadowhand, and there were still a ton of smaller Imperial warlords and splinter groups 
Thebes, which they would have had to take down. Do the World Devastators need a rebranding? Well, yeah, definitely. Maybe even you don't use them for war, or you keep the shipbuilding World Devastators hidden somewhere, but at the very least, use them to clean up planets or use them to make themselves more powerful because, as I mentioned, World Devastators themselves were essentially unbeatable tools of destruction. This isn't something like, say, the Sun Crusher, which the New Republic also destroyed. World Devastators have uses beyond just blowing things up, and the fact that the New Republic threw them away is really, really dumb. I mean, Coruscant, for example, in Star Wars Legends, is widely known to have a debris field because of the many battles over Coruscant after Endor. We get discussion of this in the Jedi Knight series, and the Young Jedi Knight series as well. I mean, a single world devastator could take care of that. I don't know, just a tool that can make any single thing you want and can use debris or other useless material to do so while also being automated and incapable of being destroyed just is way too good to get rid of. That, however, is just my opinion. What do you think? Was the threat of the world devastator too great, even if the weapons were removed or the output was limited in some way? Is there too much worry that one could be jacked by a rogue imperial or the command code could be disabled? Or was the PR look just so bad that the New Republic shouldn't use them? Let me know all of that and more down below. Also, what do you think the New Republic did in the year, year and a half they did have access to at least several world devastators? Also curious what you think they did down in the comments. Until next time guys, have a good one, be safe, and may the force be with you.